going on guys, welcome back, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Lego Ninjago movie, continuing my series, re-reviewing all of the Lego movies, building up to the Lego Movie 2, the second part. Um, so this is an unscripted review once again, so this is my uh, Journey to the Lego Movie 2 series. Today we'll be talking about the Lego Ninjago movie. Um, uh, this is pretty funny, if you know my channel, my birthday is on September 20th, and in 2017, this movie came out on September 22nd, so it was kind of a, like, belated birthday present, but only two days after, so that was great for me, so I decided to drive in near where I live when it first came out, and I really enjoyed it, and this movie is not perfect, and I know that, and I personally prefer this over the Lego Batman movie, but I think the Lego Batman movie is a better movie I just have more fun with this movie. This movie is so fun, it's so entertaining, and yeah, so there are issues which I'll talk about first. So, the issues are, the sh the, they basically disrespect a lot of the characters from the show. They get up in your face. Like, in the show, the characters, the characters have the same kind of meaning as they do in the show, such as, like, Nia and Kai. Like, they have the same kind of attitude and personality, but it's kind of ruined. Like, Kai just gets up in your face a lot. And it's kind of annoying, like, he's kind of like, oh, I'm so awesome, you know? And, like, that's kind of his cocky attitude in the show, but it's just kind of annoying here. Same with Mia, and I hate Zayn in this movie, I'm sorry. It's just after season four, when he got resurrected, season five, season six, season seven, they keep repeating the same, they kept repeating the same joke about how, oh, because Zayn was such a mature, interesting character, and then he became the, oh, I'm funny because I'm malfunctioning and I'm a robot character. And in this movie... He has some funny lines at the beginning, like when he's like, Um, if we were the Beatles, then, um, you would be John, uh, Paul, and I would uh, be their computer. And he has some funny lines like that, but then he just gets into the second half, and all his lines are just, GASP! SCREAM! And it just gets really annoying, uh, because it's just such a disrespect to his character, but I think the thing you have to do when going to this movie is, you have to be like, um, you have to look, go into this movie thinking, like, if, it, it's, uh, it's weird, because there was an Ninjago channel I used to watch called Ten or Fishies, and he really loved the movie, and he had the same kind of thing that I did, where, if you're a huge Ninjago fan, I think you're gonna like this, but you have to acknowledge the fact that it's nothing like the show. This is not the show. The show is much more mature, and this has, this is easily the most aimed at kids out of the Lego movies, but there are some mature jokes. And it is really funny, but it goes all in. It reminds me of Aquaman, the way that it's so over-exaggerated, over and it's funny. Like, you can have jokes like the sh them shooting sharks and just going, shark, 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 crab, 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 and have it actually be funny, because they go all in. Like, when uh, Lloyd shows up, he's like, surrender, Garmin, on, he's on top of the tower, and then he turns around, and it's like, boom, and then Lloyd's there, Bum! Like, they just have this big dramatic thing, and it's so over the top, and it's hilarious. This movie is so funny. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. I just have so much fun watching this movie. I, I don't get tired of rewatching. I rewatched it with my sisters a month ago after Christmas, and they really liked it a lot, and, yeah, it's really fun. And it, there's a good message. It's, it might be a simple message for a kid's film, and it is a pretty simple message. But I found it heartwarming. I found the relationship between Lloyd and Garmadon heartwarming in. Out of the three messages in these movies, which ba the Lego Batman movie, each movie in the, of, in the Lego movie series has this a kind of heart wrenching moment towards the end. In the Lego Batman movie, it's when he goes back to the Phantom Zone or attempts to, if you know what I mean. Um, and that that message is kind of about, about family. The Lego movie's message is about creativity, and in this one, I think I resonate with this message the most about uh, father and son, and I guess kind of. Just, the message, I guess, is kind of like, um, embrace people for who they are, even if they've done bad things, and it's about forgiveness, I think, and it's a really heartwarming message, and it's the one that I resonate the most with, so when I, when I first saw this movie, I nearly cried, um, but over time, but now that I've seen it more, um, I don't really find, I don't really get upset at it, like, not, you know what I mean, I don't, like, cry, but it is emotional, and I resonate with it the most out of all the messages, so anyway, getting back to the issues of the film, there's some inconsistencies. The ninja, the ninja themselves, except for Lloyd, are dumb. They are really stupid. Like, there's a moment towards the end where they're uh, throwing around the the chest with the ultimate, ultimate weapon in it. And um, they're throwing it around, 
and they're each trying to catch it, and since Lloyd was never taught to catch, he fails at catching it, but then, so yeah, he fails at catching it, and then all the ninja just stand there and go, ooh, you know, like, oh man, that sucks, you suck at catching, that sort of thing, but then they just let Garmadon bowl them over and grab the chest, it's just, they, they seem so dumb, like, and that's just kind of something annoying, and there's inconsistency, like, at, at the point after he, Lloyd chooses the ultimate weapon, and Meowthra the cat, just that cat, destroys their mechs, and they're mad at Lloyd, and they're all like, we were the only people who didn't hate you, and now we hate you, and then there's kind of Zane who's like, removing all memory of treating Lloyd as a friend. <sighs> like, kind of the, uh, garbage sound effect, like, crunk, like, crinkling sound effect, um, that you would get when you, like, delete something on your computer. It's pretty funny. Not really, though. Um... But, so they say they hate him, and then one second later, Lloyd says, Master Wu, I'm sorry, I failed Ninjago. And then Jay comes in and says, Yes, Master Wu, Lloyd failed Ninjago. Sorry, dude. And it's kind of weird, he whispers sorry, but, like, they all hated him a second ago, and then Jay says sorry, I'm like, why are you saying sorry? And then one minute, let, and then Wu's like, are you ready to forgive him? And they're all like, no, not yet. But it's just so inconsistent, it's like, so do you hate him or not? And then Zane's on his side later, where he's like, oh, you guys are... You are turning, like, and then it gets interrupted because Zane's like, I sense a fork in the road. And, Z and then Lloyd's like, oh, you're, you see, Zane, you're the only one who understands. And then they just cut off that scene. It's really weird. There's also a weird moment where they're, they're trying to have an adult joke with Garmadon, where he's like, uh, when they, it's one of the funniest parts, in my opinion, where they're flying the ship, and then he's like, you're doing great, buddy. And there's a mountain goat, and it's like, Aah! and then they use, tel they use a telescope piece to have his eyes bug out. And it, it does this, like, crazy scream. Not because of the scream, just how well-timed it is and unexpected. I just find it so hilarious. And then they land, and then Garmadon's like, Me and that goat are gonna have words. And you, you'll bet those words will start with four letters. And I'm not talking about goat. And, but it's, and like, you obviously know what he's gonna say. Uh, I'm not gonna say it here on the channel, because it's a family-friendly channel, but you can guess what he's gonna say. It could be two words. Um... And then Nia says, tell me the first letter, which I never noticed. That's pretty funny. But then it's just one adult joke. It just feels weird. Like, the other ones have some pretty, like, funny, just little, like, adult jokes in there. But then in this one, it just feels like one adult joke, and then that's it. Like, it's over. Like, that, it just feels really weird. And then there is fan service, of course, for the fans of the show. And it's it's nice fan service. It doesn't bother me like some fan service does, like, in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, where the fan service just got annoying because, um... They have McGonagall show up, but she shouldn't be born yet. And it's like I don't want fan service that wrecks the canon of my um, stories that I enjoy. But um, but this movie doesn't do that. It has some fun little like jokes about the show or references, like Garmadon references getting bitten by a snake. Of course, the Great Devourer, which made him evil. So that's interesting. And then he mentions getting bitten by a spider first. That's really interesting. I wonder if they'll expand on that in the show in the future. That might be a tease because maybe. A spider did bite the Great Devourer before it bit Garmadon. Maybe that spider will come into play. I actually thought, in Sons of Garmadon, when it showed that spider in the trailer, I thought that that's the spider that bit the Great Devourer, but I was wrong. That was like way back in last January before season eight came out. Just a little, just a little thing I th thought I'd throw out there. And then um, the Lloyd's ringtone for his phone is the Weekend Whip, which I'm so happy about. It's just a nice little reference. Like, when I first saw it at the driving with my mom and dad, I asked them if they noticed that, and they were like, no. And, uh, they watched a little bit of the show, I'm trying to catch my dad up on the show, um, and he's enjoying it. But yeah, they didn't notice that, um, but it's a fun little thing that the fans of the show will notice, um, so that I think is really fun. So, yeah, that's that, and then getting back to more issues, um, Master Wu, uh, they, they over-exaggerate his death too much, like, he makes the same joke twice. So Lloyd gets back to the Destiny's Bounty after Malthra has been unleashed, and the Destiny's Bounty is destroyed, and Wu's hat is flowing around, he thinks he's dead, and then he pops up, and he's like, Hello, students! If I were to die, it would be to teach you a lesson! And then, later on, he falls off the bridge in the forest, and then lands in the water, and there's like this over-exaggerated, sad music, and you know, it's supposed to be self-aware. But then he just, like, but then he gets back up, and he's like, Stay on the right path, find your inner peace, and then it gets swished down the river, and then they all think he's dead for some reason, and I'm like, come on, like, it's just really annoying how, oh, sad music, he's dead, 
But oh wait, he's not. But then he gets sucked down the river, and then you're sp apparently supposed to think he's dead again. And then right towards like at, before Wu rescues him in the ship, he's just like, "I hear the voices of the dead," and Wu said to jump. And then Wu rescues him on the ship, which there's no way he could have rebuilt that. I guess he's a master builder, but it was destroyed. It was pieces of it were floating in the water. And then he just like is like he says basically the same thing. He's like, "I thought being dead would teach you a lesson." And earlier in the movie, he said. Um, if I were to die, it would be to teach you a lesson. So he basically says the same kind of joke. And it's just really annoying how many times they play with that kind of, Oh, Master Wu died, woohoo. And it just, it, like, it's supposed to be self-aware and over-exaggerated, but it just gets annoying, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's pretty much most of the stuff I have to say about it. I know I've been listing off negatives, but I'm gonna talk more about positives for the rest of the review. Uh, I love this movie. Um... I know it sounds like I don't like it, but I do love it. Um, in terms of entertainment, like when I do my ranking of the movies after the Lego Movie Two comes out, it's gonna be my personal opinion, and um, like my personal opinion on the ranking. And I think I'll rank this above the Lego Batman movie. I think the Lego Batman movie is a better movie that has more themes, but this movie um, has better better themes. That is. Um, and messages, but this movie is just a ton of fun. Like, this movie is a blast from start to finish. I never feel bored throughout it. And then another kind of thing is, like, the animation can look a little weird when they're trying to combine... Because of the first Lego movie, it was complete Lego. Like, everything, the environments were all Lego. And in Lego Batman, like, the water was kind of, like... In some shots, the water was Lego pieces, but then it was also, like, literal liquid, like water. And in this movie, they make it look more environmental like they make the environments look more live action like everything's plants and then at one shot it shows them walking through the forest carrying garmadon and then it shows a spider web and then animals crawling out and it just looks weird seeing lego pieces in this live action realistic looking environment it just becomes a little distracting at points um um that's just my opinion it becomes a little distracting at points in my opinion so, sorry, that's another negative. I'm sorry, I want to talk about positives. I do really enjoy this movie, guys. Um, I think this is... It, it's a weird thing, because you have to go into this movie being a hardcore Ninjago fan to actually enjoy this movie on the level that I do, and I tell I can tell some other fans did. And I know some huge Ninjago fans on the internet who hated this movie. But, like, you have to be a hardcore fan to enjoy it, but at the same time, you have to dismiss... Um, the show from your memory because it basically destroys characters personalities and personas um, But it's just so fun and funny and, and like you have to dismiss the entire show basically um, It's weird though because this kind of affected the show like they changed the designs and everyone there's an uproar about that about season 8 when they changed the designs to the movie designs it never bothered me um, But it like it changed Ninjago like the last few seasons of Ninjago before this movie were really lame and then in this I love this movie I loved Lloyd in this movie because I, I didn't really like him in the show at all. I kind of hated him before this movie. And then in the show, Lloyd got better after this movie. So it's like this movie kind of had a ripple effect where it also helped affect the show in a positive way. And I also respect the movie for that. This movie also, the songs in this movie are also insanely catchy. Um, like when I watched it with my sisters, the song that's playing right now is The Dance of Doom. And that song is insanely catchy. Um, it's just so catchy and fun and it's just, it's just insane. And then there's, your heroes are on the way, and just like all these other songs, and they don't, don't sound too pop songy ish, you know. Um, so yeah, like they, it's really the songs are really catchy, and like obviously it's not on par with something like Everything Is Awesome, but it's still they're still really catchy. Like the Lego Batman movie didn't really have any. Um, like, I like the score in the Lego Batman movie. The score is strangely good in the Lego Batman movie, which is something I forgot to mention. But, with this movie, um, the soundtrack is just really fun and, uh, um, really, really energetic. And, uh, it's better than the Lego Batman movie soundtrack, that's for sure. Uh, right next, it's right next to the Lego movie soundtrack, in my opinion, but we'll have to wait and see when the Lego movie 2 comes out. Uh, to see if that one has a good soundtrack. Um... But yeah, this movie has some really catchy songs as well. So, yeah, I think that's all the, the things I have to talk about with this movie. Um, 
it, it created kind of a ripple effect. I respect this movie a lot. It created a ripple effect, which also affected the show in a positive way and sent the show in a really good direction, in my opinion. Uh, so if you're going to be asking me, like, I know I've been kind of talking about this movie as a Ninjago fan, but if you're watching this movie not as a Ninjago fan, I think you'll enjoy it because my aunt watched this movie and she, um, she hadn't seen any of the show and she enjoyed it. So even if you're not a Ninjago fan, I think you'll enjoy this movie, but you won't enjoy it as much as if you're a Ninjago fan. But at the same time, there are things that I think will offend Ninjago fans. But that's the thing. When you're watching this movie, you have to put the show out of your mind. Because this movie is completely different. This is not the show. This is completely different. It's, you might as well just pretend this isn't Ninjago. But I find this movie heartwarming, charming, fun, uh, entertaining, funny. The comedy is on point. I think the, the, this movie has some of the funniest jokes out of all the Lego movies, in my opinion. Garmadon is such a funny character, the voice work, and distinct voice by Garmadon, um, what's his name? Um, Justin Thoreau? Justin Thoreau, that's his name, who played, uh, Garmadon in this movie. He's such a distinct voice, and it just adds this layer of comedy and fun to the character, and he's definitely one of the best characters in the film. Um, I really love the emotional ending once again, but, like, the way Lloyd just suddenly kind of starts crying in his, like, teenager-y, like, angsty way, and he's like, I just, I need my dad, and it just gets kind of annoying, like, he gets kind of annoying at some points, but never overly annoying to the point where I hate his character. I really enjoy Lloyd in this movie. He's definitely the smartest and most fun character out of the ninja, because the other ninja just feel kind of dumb in this movie. They just feel really stupid. Um, so, yeah, um, is, so overall, I guess, I'll think of, I'll, rate this as a lego movie and as a uh, and compared to the show so comparatively to the show it's not on par uh to the show as a whole to some seasons uh, i don't like in my opinion i don't like season two that much um i don't love season four but i think season four is okay i don't really like season six but it's been a while since i've seen it but i hated season seven i hated day of the day of the departed so it's better than certain seasons because I really don't like season two. I don't like season six, from what I remember. I hate season seven and I hate Day of the Departed. So it's it's better than those. But uh, season five, season one, uh, season eight and nine, which are still my favorites, um, it's not better than those. So it's not better than a show as a whole because more of the show outweighs this movie. But as a uh, an Injago movie, it's really fun and enjoyable. And then as a Lego movie, it's definitely the weakest. Um, as like a critical from a critical standpoint it's the worst one uh it has less adult humor and less clever jokes in it there's a lot more kind of dope and sick and you know that kind of like current like uh teenager slang that they kind of throw around a lot in this movie more so than the other ones um at some points it fits but at some points when master Wu says it, it just feels weird um so it has more of that. So as a Lego movie, I think it's the weakest out of the three main Lego movies. The Lego movie, the Lego Batman movie, and the Lego Ninjago movie. I personally enjoy this movie more than the Batman movie. I enjoy the Batman movie a lot, and rewatching it like last week for this series really made me appreciate it more, which I was really happy about, because I enjoyed that movie so much more on that viewing. Um, and looking at it from a critical standpoint, it was really solid. But, um... It's the weakest out of the Lego movies, but I enjoy it more than the Lego Batman movie. So as a movie, I'm going to give it a B plus. It has a lot of issues, more than I remembered. But as a Lego fan and a Jago fan, this is basically a birthday present for me because it came out two days after my birthday. Um, so, yeah, this movie is, um, I like it more than the Lego Batman movie. I have more fun with it, um, but I understand that it's not as good. So... Um, I'm gonna give the, mo the movie as a whole a B plus, but on an entertainment level and on my entertainment level and enjoyment of the film, I'm gonna give it an A. So, that's my opinion on the Lego Ninjago movie. You guys let me know what you think of the Lego Ninjago movie and what you thought of my review building up to the Lego movie 2. Um, stay tuned for next week's review of a unknown Lego movie. It's a Lego movie, but it's a, um, let me guess which movie you think it is, because it's a surprise, uh, bonus review next week when the lego movie 2 comes out so you guys let me know what you thought of the lego ninjago movie and what you thought of my review as well in the comments and uh this movie is very split among fans and critics so i want to know some of your opinions um on the movie in the comments did you hate it did you love it did you like it so uh just let me know all your opinions in the comments and i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys have a great day take care